I chuckled, <laughs> bringing my glass to my lips. The half-melted ice cubes crashed against my teeth as I downed the last of the liquid, barely tasting any gin at all. It was time for a refill, my fourth of the night. I got up from my desk, my Tor browser still open to the dark web chat room where some dude was asking for people to kill him. <laughs> Chuckling again and shaking my head at how crazy people could be, I picked up my glass and headed out of my room. But as I approached the kitchen, I heard my dad clear his throat. Turning around, I headed back to my room. My dad had come into the kitchen while I was getting my last refill, and I didn't really want him to see me getting another one so soon. I mean, he knew I drank. According to him, I had a problem. He and my mom had sat me down about a month ago and talked to me about it. Since then, I'd been trying to keep it on the down low. I didn't think I had a drinking problem. I mean, I was only 22. I had a job. Granted, it didn't pay enough for me to move out of my parents' house, but still, it was a job. I only drank at night. Sure, I drank alone, which is one of the signs of alcoholism. But wasn't drinking at home better than going out and about, spending too much money and possibly getting into trouble? I thought so. My parents should have been happy that I drank at home. People are crazy, after all. One glance at the dark web was all you needed to realize that. So I got back to my room, deciding to do a little more dark web surfing while I waited for my dad to go to bed. He was probably just eating his nightly snack before hitting the hay. I navigated away from the chat room and went to the Amia search engine to pull up some random weird dark websites. It used to be video games while I was drinking, and I still play on occasion, but the dark web had been more entertaining for me. I could spend hours at a time on it, talking to random people, checking out strange websites, and generally getting creeped out. It was a blast. When the first search didn't bring up anything all that good, I searched again, using the phrase, dark websites you should never visit. Now we were talking. There were some juicy sites, but one in particular caught my attention. It simply said, get haunted. That was it. Underneath, it said no description provided. Under that, there was the dot onion address of the site. I clicked on the link and the page changed. The screen that came up was black with large, white pixelated letters at the top that said, get haunted. Under those words, there were four pixelated characters, two men and two women. They bobbed up and down slightly on the screen. The women wore simple dresses and the men wore suits. The whole thing looked like one of those ancient video games, like Space Invaders or something. Three words appeared, one at a time, from the bottom of the screen. Choose your ghost. What is this? I asked, amused. Some kind of game? I used my mouse to hover the cursor over one of the men. Then I clicked on him. A small window popped up, asking for $30 worth of Bitcoin. $30? I said. I wasn't sure I wanted to pay that much to see what would happen next. It was probably a ripoff. Leaving the browser open, I stood up and crept out into the hall. I could see no light coming from the kitchen. So I ducked back into my room and grabbed my glass. Three minutes later, I had a fresh gin and tonic, and my last one had really started to hit me. So I said screw it, and spent the $30 on the game. After all, I saved money by staying home and drinking. $30 is nothing when you're at a bar. That was how I justified spending the money anyway. Once I transferred the Bitcoin, the window disappeared. The little man I'd clicked on stopped floating up and down. There was an ah sound and his tiny pixel eyes turned to X's. A puddle of bright red pixelated blood appeared around him, stark against the dark background. The page changed again, showing me a completely blank screen. After a moment, words showed up. You are now haunted, goodbye. Suddenly, I was back at the Amia search engine homepage. What was that shit? I said, a little too loud. $30 for that? I clicked on the Get Haunted link again. The screen changed, blinking black, before it took me back to the Amia search page again. God damn it! I breathed, 
I knew it was a f***ing ripoff. I spent the rest of the night messing around on the dark web. At least I assume that's what I did. When I awoke the next day to angry banging on my door, I couldn't remember how much of anything after the Get Haunted site. Isaac, get your butt out here right now. It was my mom, and she sounded pretty pissed. Groggy and hungover, I pulled some shorts and a t-shirt on, unlocked my door, and stepped out. My mom wasn't yet dressed for work, making me wonder what time it was. What happened? I asked, voice thick with sleep. Come with me, she said, heading down the hall toward the kitchen. I followed on wobbly legs, head throbbing. As we came to the kitchen doorway, she stepped aside and gestured at the kitchen. I looked inside, dread nodding my guts. The place was a mess. The fridge and freezer doors stood open and food was all across the floor. My dad stood in the kitchen in shorts and a t-shirt. He dragged his gaze from the mess, putting his eyes on me. I saw that the clock read 6.06. The summer sky wasn't yet at full brightness. In the dining room beyond the kitchen, the chairs had been stacked on the table in a haphazard tower. It looked like a strong air current would knock them over. I didn't do this, I said. Just because you don't remember doing it, doesn't mean you didn't do it, my dad said. You have a serious problem. This is unacceptable. You have to stop drinking or you can find another place to live. Why would I do this? Why? You're saying someone broke into the house last night and did this? My mom said. Because it certainly wasn't me or your father and you're the only other one living here. I don't know who did it, but it wasn't me. You were drinking last night though, right? My dad asked. Like the night before and the night before? Yeah, but... And what about a week ago when you made nachos and left all the supplies out overnight? Not to mention the giant mess you made? What about when you fell into the hallway wall and put a hole in the drywall that I had to repair? What about when you pissed in your own bed because you were too drunk to get up and use the bathroom? Unable to hold my father's gaze any longer, I looked down at the mess. I'll clean it up. You're got right you will. I've already dumped all the booze out. What? I bought that stuff. And if you bring another drop into this house, you will be out on your ass. You understand me, Isaac? Swallowing my anger, I nodded. Yes, good, now get to work. I had to go to work later that day, and for the first half of my shift, I was confident that I wouldn't be drinking later. I wanted to not drink, I truly did. But by the end of my shift, it was all I could think about. So I stopped at a store and bought a fifth of vodka on my way home. Knowing my parents might search me in my car, I pulled over and stashed the bottle in a bush half a block from my house. Sure enough, my dad searched my backpack, my person, and my car. I could tell he was still pissed from the morning. I waited for my parents to go to sleep before sneaking out of the house to grab the bottle. As I walked down the block, I could have sworn someone was walking down the sidewalk behind me. I spun around, but didn't see anyone. When I got to the bush, I looked around. Then I ducked down and reached back to grab the bottle. A hand gripped my wrist, causing me to cry out. I pulled my arm back, but the grip held fast. When I yanked a second time, it released me, and I fell back onto the sidewalk without the vodka. Staring at the bush, I thought I was going nuts. It was backed by a cinder block fence and there wasn't enough room for someone to be hiding behind it. I would have seen them. But my wrist still hurt from where the hand or the branch or whatever it was had grabbed me. Getting to my feet, I kept my gaze fixed on the bush. I pulled out my phone and shone the flashlight around, seeing nothing out of the ordinary. And when I reached back again and pulled out the fifth of vodka, I felt nothing but stiff leaves and branches. I walked back to my house glancing behind me every five or six steps. Since the front door was further from my parents' room than the back door, I'd used it to leave the house. I'd left it unlocked, so when I returned, I opened it slowly, stepped into the dark entryway, and gently closed the door. After I locked the deadbolt, I turned around to see a dark figure about the size and shape of my dad standing in the hallway entry. I flinched, nearly dropping the bottle to the hardwood floor but catching it with the tips of my fingers. And when I looked back up, 
there was no figure there. I thought for sure I'd been busted, but I moved to the hallway and glanced down it, seeing nothing there. My paranoia was running rampant. I went to my room, slumped down in my computer chair, and cracked open the vodka bottle. I didn't want to risk making noise in the kitchen, so I just drank it straight out of the bottle. But this time, I stayed off the dark web. I hadn't forgotten about the Get Haunted site from the night before. And even though it was completely ridiculous, some part of me thought that the strange stuff happening might have been because of that. Instead of surfing the dark web, I played video games as I got drunker and drunker. Pretty soon, I was blackout drunk. The next thing I remember, I was waking from a deep sleep because someone was spraying me with water. As I scrambled up, I quickly realized that wasn't quite right. I was in the backyard and the sprinklers had just come on. Once I got off the lawn, I took a moment to get my bearings. I couldn't remember coming outside at all. The sun was just peeking over the horizon and I knew my parents would be up soon if they weren't already. I couldn't let them see me like this. I stumbled to the back door, noting that at least I'd closed it whenever I wandered out. I opened the door and stepped into a wall of rotten egg stench. I could hardly breathe and I had to step back and open the door to catch a breath. At first, in my hungover state, things didn't compute. I thought that I'd left some eggs out or something, but that didn't make sense. Eggs didn't go bad that fast. Then a terrible thought occurred to me. Leaving the door open, I rushed inside to the kitchen. I went directly to the stove, seeing the food items placed haphazardly around it. Two of the gas stove's range burners were on high, but there were no flames. Panic building, I turned off the burners and opened the kitchen window. It was a little easier to breathe now that there was some airflow. I ran past the den and to my parents' bedroom, glancing up at the carbon monoxide detector in the ceiling outside their room. It was hanging from a single wire, as if someone had ripped it down. I knocked on the door. Mom? Dad? You awake? My voice was shaking. There was no answer, but I could hear an alarm going off in there. Mom? Dad? Are you awake? I was screaming now. I turned the knob and stepped into the room. They were still in bed. My dad lay on his back, looking like he was still asleep. My mom lay on her side, facing away from me. The alarm clock on the nightstand next to my dad's side of the bed was beeping. Dad? I shouted, running over and grabbing him by the shoulders. He wasn't warm, not like a living human should be. Reaching over, I grabbed my mom's shoulder and rolled her onto her back. Mom? She was cold too. I was getting lightheaded, but I couldn't tell if it was because of the lack of oxygen in the room or the dawning realization that my parents were dead. I slumped to the floor next to the bed, breaking down in tears. The constant beep of the alarm was like a nail being hammered into my head. I don't know how long I cried. A long time. When I got some semblance of control back, I called the police. My lawyer said that if it hadn't been for the damaged carbon monoxide detector, I probably wouldn't have been charged with murder. He could have argued that it was a drunken mistake. The gas range malfunctioned while I was trying to cook and I decided to go outside to try and gather myself before heading back in to figure out what was wrong. But then I passed out. That would have been the story, if not for the carbon monoxide detector. The fact that it had clearly been damaged was evidence of premeditation, the prosecutor said. Strangely enough though, the police found no fingerprints on it, none other than some very faded ones belonging to my dad. Still, it was enough. I got 25 to life for killing my parents. I'll be lucky to get out by the time I'm 40 years old. But that's not even the worst part. The worst part has to do with the Get Haunted site I went to the night before my parents died. I remember that clearly. And at first, I thought that it was a ghost who killed my parents. The same ghost that grabbed my wrist at the bush and the same one that appeared when I stepped back into the house. Now I realize that wasn't the case. But those instances were my subconscious, trying to get me to not drink that fucking bottle of vodka. At the bush, it was trying to get me to leave it. In the house, it was trying to get me to drop the thing so it would shatter. Somehow, deep inside, part of me knew something terrible would happen if I kept drinking. 
But that doesn't mean the site didn't work. It did. Because now, every single night in my prison cell, I'm visited by the ghosts of my parents. They won't leave me alone. They won't ever leave me alone. That stupid sight was right. I got haunted. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe and smash that like button to get notified every time I upload a new video.